Welcome back, everyone, to another exciting episode of the Airgun Geeks podcast. In this episode, Patrick and I will take you on an odyssey of RMAC registration and the exciting news that Patrick has on his participation in RMAC for 2023, and also the little contest Patrick and I have going on that surrounds our Notos rifles from Umarex and all of the news that is fit to tell you about in the airgun world. So, welcome everyone. Let's get into the podcast. Take it away, Patrick. And welcome to another episode of the Airgun Geeks podcast, where it's just Pat and Bill catching up and catching on. What do you mean, just Patrick and Bill? I mean, what more do you need in your air gun life than Patrick and Bill? I mean, you know, really, Patrick. Okay, you got me. <laughs> you got me. So uh, I, I know everyone's been wondering why a podcast didn't come out last Monday. Yeah, um, I was wondering that myself. Yeah, some people called. Um, life and technical difficulties is what i'll is what i'll call mm. uh it's it's been nuts ended up getting uh bill and i were like looking at each other while bonnie was trying to get the new laptop up and going and i'm like it's not working <laughs> so <laughs> we're back to the old equipment so it was a you, fun start you were being very one. helpful by the way telling her every 30 seconds that you know it's not working right yeah mm -hmm. it's not working do you know it's not working uh do you know that <laughs> The funny part was the voice behind the multiple tabs that were open saying, you shouldn't have bought an Apple. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that could have been. No idea. So I think it was Henson whispering mm -hmm. behind your ear. It could be. Could be. So I, how you been? I'll tell you what, I've been better uh, recently. I, I, I had a, I had a rough go of it there for a while. I, uh, I was working here in the Bay Area, and I had uh, I had driven for a meeting in uh, Hollister, California. And on the way back from that, I got as far as Santa Cruz, California, and I had to pull my truck over because I was I was going to pass out. And I pulled into a parking lot at a local real estate agency, and I passed out. And um, I woke up about an hour and a half later and I was like, holy shit, I'm, you know, I'm sitting here in my truck uh, in the middle of this parking lot. People are going to think I'm a vagrant. Um, so I said, I'm going to try and make it home. And I, I drove home and uh, I went in the house and I told my wife, I said, I am not feeling very well at all. And I sat down in the chair and as I sat there, um, I got progressively worse and it got to the point where I couldn't breathe anymore. And I was like, I felt like the, the room was getting darker and, you know, getting some tunnel vision. And, and I thought, wow, this, this doesn't feel like what being healthy is. Uh, <laughs> I need to do something here. So I told her, I said, you know, I, I don't know what's going on, but, the shortness of breath and some pain in my chest. I think I might be having a heart attack. And she's like, holy crap. So she calls, she calls 911. And, you know, all of the EMTs, which there's a, a firehouse right down the road. So they were here in, in minutes. And they're like, well, you know, we don't, there's no indications to us that you're having a heart attack, but you're not well. Uh, we know you're not well. Uh, so they they whisked me to the hospital, and it turns out um, I had an exceptionally fast-moving uh, infection that yeah. had pretty much commandeered my entire right leg. And I didn't even know. I, I had no indication that I anything was wrong with me other than the fact that I didn't feel well. And... Um, that started the odyssey uh, and 20 days in the hospital on IV antibiotics. And I was, I was septic when I got there uh, was starting organ failure. And 
you know, they were able to stave that off and, and keep me around for a little while longer. But yeah, I had, uh, I had no idea. And it turns out, you know, that it, it was somewhat my own fault in that um, a lot of the things that I had done to control my type 2 diabetes, I had ignored over the winter. I just lost uh, lost my way with uh, with my diet and my exercise. And it it came back to haunt me and allowed that um, that infection to progress at the rate that it did. And um all the while that I was in the hospital, the company I was working for um, slowly slid into uh, Chapter 11, and there they've laid everyone off. So um, all of us that were with that company are now, well, not quite all of us yet. I think the finance guy and the HR person is still there. Hey. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure which one fires the other <laughs> at the end, but... Uh, that's all that's left. And uh, so if anybody's looking for engineering talent, I would love to stay in the air gun world. Um, and if you need help, I'm I'm happy to do that. Uh, but anyway, uh, right after I got out of the hospital, uh, my wife had her knee replaced. Jeez. Yeah. So um, luckily, she she really bounced back really fast. I mean, she was she, right after an hour and a half after the surgery, she was walking on that new joint. Um, oh, just crazy to me to think that that medical science has come that far. You know, some aspects of it I think are really good; others, uh, not so much. But um, that part of it, uh, she's she's pretty happy. Um, she's about about two weeks ahead of schedule with her PT right now. She's oh. really getting around really well and. Uh, and should resume driving soon, which that'll be great because I won't have to haul her around anymore. But uh, <laughs> oddly enough, the, the night before I went into the hospital, I got a package from my, my buddy Patrick, mm -hmm. the uh, the Alpha Geek. And it was a Notos uh, by Umarex. And... Mm -hmm. Part of the mission for both Patrick and I having exactly the same rifle with exactly the same optic on it is that we're going to have a little game of horse. Only we're not going to play with boring letters like horse. Mm -hmm. We're going to use geeks. Mm -hmm. So the way this will go going forward is uh, one week, Patrick will decide the challenge. And he'll say, you got to do this. And whoever gets it in the least amount of shots wins or whatever way you, whatever way you want to structure it, it's up to you. Um, but we'll have a, uh, a marksmanship challenge with our Nodos rifles. And, um, and we'll see, uh, we'll see who the uh, superior marksman is in all of this. The nice thing about doing a contest with the Nodos is you really don't need a whole lot of space for it because you're, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're probably not going to use that particular gun out past 40 yards. Uh, it's just, that's not what it's made for. It is really, really cool in tight, about 20 foot pounds of energy out of that gun. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you for the price, it is pretty nicely put together for, for a regulated, um, regulated PCP gun magazine fed uh, comes with one magazine and one shot tray. I think uh, mm -hmm. the, the only thing if I had to criticize them uh, would be, it's got a freaking fill probe on it. Um, when, when are my German friends going to get the message that you need to just put a, a quick mm -hmm. on there and, and not have this probe thing. But while I was convalescing in the hospital, uh, I actually, <laughs> I had a notebook in my, uh, in my hospital room. And while I was in there, you know, uh, my, my brain was still working. And I had this idea for uh, something called the Notos doodad. And Patrick got his today. 
I mm-hmm. made him one and I shipped it to him and um, he was pretty pleased, but it's right here. This is the no toast doodad. It holds the single shot tray right down here. It holds two magazines and it has a spot for your fill probe. This fill probe is a nice snug friction fit. The magazines and the shot tray are all retained magnetically. So they, they snap down into place and, and have pretty good retention. Uh, but they're easy to get in and out, too. And it all clamps to the Picatinny rail on the top of the gun. And I originally thought, well, maybe I need to make this go on the side because it would interfere with the with the scope. And, and Patrick, the scope you spec for those guns was the um, the Bug Buster. Uh, yeah, a 3 to 12 by 32. By UTG. Yep. And I'll tell you, with this sitting on the pick rail, you can't see it. It's not it's not in the field of view of the scope at all. Um, so, you know, anything, any scope that you got on there, I don't think this will be a problem visually. But um, it slides right on, bolt secures it, clamps it in place, and um, then all your stuff is with your gun. Because, I don't know, if you're like me, I will always forget the one thing I need. I'll get to where I'm going to shoot and I won't have the stupid fill probe and <laughs> my air supply yeah. will be on empty or I'll get there and I forgot the freaking mag um, or, I, you know, I don't have the single shot tray or something. But this this will allow me to keep everything right with the gun in a nice, neat, orderly way. And it looks it looks pretty badass. It actually looks like it was meant to go on that gun. Mm-hmm. And they'll be available on the Target Forge website next week uh they will uh they will kick off and you'll be able to order them and i don't know if you guys can hear it right now but my uh 3d printer is busy churning them out right here in the uh in the target forge bunker (laughs) in in very rainy storm whipped california we have just gotten punished and uh I was a little worried that Patrick and I were not going to be able to bring you a podcast today because my power and my internet has just been up and down ridiculously for the last couple months. But um, here we are. I'm glad to be here. Patrick, what in the heck has been going on in Ohio? I know you guys have uh, been attacked by by trains and and all kinds of stuff out there. (laughs) Um, Oh, yeah. What's going on out there? Well, um, I think it's World War III, but that's me. Uh, yeah, trains can't stay on the tracks, and people ain't cleaning up their messes right. Um, what do you mean? Fire, of, fire is not a solution for a mess cleanup. Fire is not a solution. No, really? Huh? It's created that's a not... bit of a a bit of a problem for the state of Ohio, if you ask me. Hmm. Um. The other things that have been going on is the weather. Mm. You've been getting water. We've been getting everything. <laughs> Rain, sleet, snow. That's all you, water, technically, just in different <laughs> forms. Well, our, our temperature swings are nothing like yours, but we went from like 20s to 40s in one day. So you had many inches of snow, and then by noon it was all gone. And then it was a lie because when you go out of the sun into the shade, it's like, oh, my God, you need a coat. But us Ohioans, that's what we've been doing. And it is March. So it could be worse. Beware Um, the Ides of March, Patrick. Yes, yes. So but it is the second day of spring that that we're uh, chatting today. So it was uh, it was 50. It was a balmy 50. The sun was out. Uh, The robins are everywhere. So you could tell it's definitely spring in Ohio. Nice. No um, Batman, just just all Robins? Just Robins. Yeah, uh, it's too cold for Batman. He's still hiding. Ah, okay. Um, you know, those tights make it kind of rough. Uh, I, I, yeah. <laughs> he's still cuddled up with Punks of Tony Phil in Pennsylvania. Ah. So, but that's coming to an end. Um, Let's see. Oh, God, there's so much going on. Um. Oh, so what what popped off on the 17th of March, everyone should be in their car going, was RMAC registration. 
Oh, that, that popped off. Yes, I was there. So promptly. we have an official comp competitor now here on the Airgun Geeks. Yeah, welcome, we Bill. We won't need no. a guest to interview a, a true RMAC competitor. He'll be part of the show. Yeah, there's a there's a pit guy, and then there's a guy that's going to pull the trigger. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And well, so I, I lucked out and jumped on as soon as registration opened. I was like, fine. You were oh, hammering like, away on that button. Oh, I was already. I was already. I was like, pro division. Yeah. 100 yard. Yeah. I did everything but precision. I'm gonna be honest. Oh, you you I'll swung be... for the fences. You got in everything. Pro, the pro. Yep. Wow. Well, well, you know, you gotta you, you aim high. You aim high. I don't. I didn't. I didn't want to like start low. I'm gonna go high. So you yeah, I'll be doing. Did, you didn't want to get hell heckled by people saying, <laughs> "Why is this guy in the amateur league? He's got his own podcast for crying out loud." Yeah, pretty much. I didn't want to show people up. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll start the Schmidt talking now. Um, but I signed up for hundred yard. Say, did you say Schmidt's talking now? Schmidt talking. Yeah. yeah okay. I don't want art to get mad at me. Uh, so we, we, we got our sensor guy out there. We got a, he, he's always there like, ah, ah, ah PG, PG. <laughs> I love art. Yeah. He's, he's doing well, but we'll get to him in a second. I just saw where he was getting all ready for the HFT season and whatnot. But, uh, so going to be doing hundred yard competition. Um, surprise caliber will be announced during the uh, podcast while we're there. Um, I'm going to do speed shooting because I love shooting fast. And I even signed How does Tommy up. How feel about that? I see where you went with that. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, yeah, yeah. Very good. Uh, so <laughs> I also signed uh, us up for big board. Us. So us. Yeah, well, you get to carry the ammo. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, I come in with. I do well as a pack mule. I uh, I hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah. So the the only thing, Bill, is we have to dig up a gun. Mm. So, if someone wants to let us borrow their big bore air gun, mm -hmm. it has to be a hundred forty foot pounds or more. Uh, and we'll make sure that we video it being shot in the competition. Um, shoot an email to the airgun geeks at gmail.com. Um, cause we're looking for a big board gun. That's one thing that Bill and I don't have. So, no. and what, whatever you want, whatever caliber, I don't care. We're here to have fun. And if we can ring the bell up on the Hill, let's do it. I think it will be fun. Definitely got to bring our ears <laughs> cause it's loud. Now I have to ask the question, Patrick, because the reason I don't own a big bore gun is because, you know, I'm, I'm in a fishbowl here in California. My, mm -hmm. my farm is surrounded by, um, by homes filled with Karens. I mean, they, they've got Karens all over the place. And if I make any noise around here that they don't like, uh, I get, you know, my phone rings off the hook. They call the County, they call the cops, they call everybody call their their moms their psychic um their nail girl all kinds of things and i i don't have one because there's nowhere for me to shoot it here unless i go to the mm -hmm. range so where where are you going to to bone up on this uh on this big bore gun to the level of mastery that will put you on the podium at armac well i am a member of the isaac walton foundation or ah, Isaac Walton League. Very nice. So we have a range there um, that I can easily scooch back probably 200 yards mm, nice. and ring some steel. Um, So, yeah, I could do that. And then there's a couple places, farmland, that I can get out and really stretch it out and, and learn the dope. That's cool. probably the, the biggest thing for, for me is to make sure I figure out the dope for it. So, yeah, but I mean, I don't own one because I have no use for one. You know, if if I need one. They would be really yeah. big pests for you to need a, a big. Yeah, one. like like deer. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, I mean. At Strangely that point, enough, Patrick, you would end up with some uh, interesting jewelry uh, if you were to consider deer a pest animal. Although a lot of people do consider them that. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, they do have a season, and uh, yeah, most people frown on uh, frown on that. Well, the farmers, it's if it's a nuisance animal, it's that's a nuisance true. Animal. That's true. I can actually do that here. Yeah. And um, I've the, the, with the volume of turkeys that that call this place home, um, I could I could have Thanksgiving like every other week for the whole year um, with the volume mm-hmm. of turkeys that are here. But uh, I could actually get away with that. But I, that, I they're too tame. They actually come right up to me. And I, I could probably take them <laughs> out with a Swiss Army knife. Um, I, I don't, I would feel bad shooting them. I think, um, but the squirrels—that's a different story. Uh, the squirrels, I, I, I lay waste to whenever I can. But uh, mm-hmm. that's that is awesome, Patrick. Um, number one, to hear that you're going to Armac, not only as a intrepid air gun geek reporter and collect mm-hmm. stories. But you're also there to uh, to help pen your own story as a honest to gosh, Armac competitor. So congratulations! You'll have to, you'll have to interview me. Yeah, you know? yeah. The I'll three see, questions. I'll see <laughs> if know? I can get you to open up on camera. Oh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, one one thing we're gonna do that that worked out well last year, and 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 you and I were talking about this, Bill, is sitting down and having a nice quiet area for the competitor to come over, drink some water take some weight off, disappear, mm-hmm. cool off yep. was a big thing. And just talk about, you know, what brought them there and all that and why they like it and what they're competing in and where they want to go. Cause uh, there's a lot of competitions now comparatively just in one year. I mean, you got the, was it the Northeast air gun competition at the six hour uh, range uh, next month in New Hampshire. Yep. That's new. Um I hear Pyramid Push. Cup is back this year too. Pyramid Cup is back. Yes. Uh, uh registration I think opens up in 11 or 12 days. If you hit up the Pyramid Air website, uh you'll definitely see it. I will definitely be there competing. Um especially since it's semi in my backyard. It's a little south, but still. Um yeah, that's exciting. They're doing like 100 yard bench uh hunter field target. Uh they call it the gunslinger competition aka That's a speed shooting right speed shooting aka yeah. the speed shooting yeah yeah um that's those uh those little metal targets that if mm-hmm. you don't put a string at them they go into like the next county yeah or dimension never find uh, it again yeah or stuck in a tree i've had that with the chicken <laughs> it just right in the tree i'm like what the heck oh my so i always tell people you know hey, if you get those make sure you tie them down because they just phew, take off but uh but yeah that'd be fun That'd be fun. So make sure you check that out. Get your housing and whatnot because it fills up fast. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 a Cardinal Center in Morrow County here in Ohio. And it's it's if you've never been there, that place is phenomenal. That's where um, Ohio State University shoots shotgun and and whatnot, and they have all sorts of stuff. So bring your RVs, tents. They got cabins. So you get you get to choose. I'll oh, be in that, a deluxe. I'm staying cabin. with you, Patrick. Well, I'll be in a deluxe cabin. Yeah, come on down. <laughs> Yeah, at, at, and in the evenings, we'll uh, make sure we have refreshments. Are so, because you? you're in the middle of nowhere, you better bring your own food. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's it's nice right next to, uh, what is that, 71, just north of uh, Columbus. Nice. So, yeah, that'd be exciting. Uh, everyone's excited about that because that, that would, that's a big one. That brings uh, the South African guys in. Uh, we'll see if, I uh, can't think of his name, but he's from Russia. Hopefully he'll be allowed into the country. Uh, he's a good, good shooter. I can't. I wish I. I can, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, but he's a very I good. Know shot. Who you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah. Yeah. You got that coming up. There was another one going on. I can't think. I was talking to Thane Simmons, uh, the other day, uh, because uh, I was fascinated with the new fishing mm-hmm. barrel that came up. But we'll get to yep. that in a second. Um. But he said he had a couple more competitions. There, there's, there's been a lot going on. Um, I'm excited to see who's going to show up as far as vendor at RMAC. Um, it's a another crap ton of sponsors. At, I mean, I'm like, wow, that's more than last year. So that's good. Um, and and like Bill and I said, say all the time, even if you're not competing, show up. Oh yeah, 
show up because I didn't compete last year. It was my first, you know, eye opening, very excited. And I'm like, it was life changing. And I've been everyone I've talked to. I was like, just show up, even if it's for a day, just show up. And if you want to volunteer, I, I know for a fact that uh, uh, Justin and Austin and the whole team can use some help. Yep. Very true. It's a lot of work. So, and they did great last year. So, so yeah. Um, sportsman class, I think is still open. So you can still register for that. Um, I don't know. It's, it's like you can sign up for all the disciplines for like three and a quarter. And it's got pretty good, pretty good money in the pot. Nice. So, but I think the experience and the knowledge you'll gain is, is the priceless part. So, but, uh, what else is going on? Did yeah, you, pretty... did you happen to see the most recent newsletter from the AAFTA? I have not. Well, I'd suggest you uh, you get a look at that because a very, very interesting rule change that I was quite vocal about uh, here on the podcast, also on our Facebook group. I thought that the um, the cap on the pistol class for the scope at at you, you had to have a. a a scope that was 12 X or that's mm -hmm. the, biggest, the biggest you could have. And, you know, finding a, finding a scope anymore that is uh, the caps at 12 X has gotten the, the, the amount of choice in that market space has gotten really, really tiny. And I was critical of that rule. I'm like this, this rule doesn't make sense. All it does is artificially restrict the number of scopes that you can pick from. If you want to limit the magnification at 12x, that's fine. It's already done in the rifle class. Mm -hmm. Why not just limit, you know, the max magnification you can use to 12x? And it allows people, if they want to spend the money on a quality optic, they can. I like to shoot with good glass. I really, mm -hmm. I really love my my element optics. I I love um, I love any scope that really gives me a crisp, clean image, and. You know, a, a lot of those, uh, you know, especially the some of the Optizon scopes are are really, yeah, really nice for for that that class of competition, and they're excluded because they they go above twelve x. So now that rule has changed. So I was I was very happy. It was funny because Phil Hepler uh, is pretty pretty connected uh, in the AAFTA world and he kept kind of hinting around he didn't want to say anything but he's like there's change in the wind just just hang on to your, <laughs> hang on to your knickers and and uh we'll get around to it and they did it looks like they had their meeting uh their annual meeting right after the championships in puerto rico and um and that is now a fact that in the pistol class you can uh you have a lot more choice in optics which i applaud them so bravo after for for that rule change oh oh <laughs> well you know what's funny when, <laughs> when you play uh any of the audio from your mm -hmm. box it actually doesn't come out on my recording um really yeah so even when you when you have the intro music um one of these days i have to get that from you as a as a file so that i can edit it in to the video content because when you play it on your box it actually doesn't come through my audio because it would have to go through your microphone i can hear it a little bit like little bits and pieces mm -hmm. but it sounds like your microphone is actively trying to cancel it as noise as well weird yeah interesting because yeah, so so one thing i will say is your intro that you do for the youtube video for air gun geeks podcast priceless oh thank you I love that. One, it shows your farm off. Two, your narration is 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 top shelf. Oh, thank you very much. It it's like the first time I saw it, I was like, "Holy Schmitz!" That <laughs> that is that is awesome. So that is the Schmitz. Yes, 
Well, you know, b- back in high school, my my just to go back on that a little bit, my nickname was Shits, S C H I T Z, all the way through high school. And then my brother, when he started as a freshman, because I and when I and I was a senior, they called him Little Shits. <laughs> That's and funny. then they called my son they call him tiny shits mm-hmm. he's not tiny anymore but but nonetheless that that's the the lineage of the uh, schmitz nice. aka shits family so yeah and, and i don't and i don't have a, a show so uh, shits creek is is not mine but thank you i, I had a much easier life in high school because my last name was rule so it would either be the golden rule or bill rules or you know anything like that that was mm-hmm. probably better than uh than being the shits but um it's all good yeah yeah so let's see what else is going on um well, speaking of being the being the shits um and that's s h i t z by the way mm-hmm. uh, just, just in case uh, our friend art's listening so there's been some fascinating things that I've come across recently, Bill. Really? And yeah, yeah. One of them was, uh, I'm, I'm, I seem to be infatuated with Moose, Air Guns of Michigan, because he does such a darn good job. The stud loader. I've looked at them, you know, and he, they make them for all different types of air guns. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I got the impact. I'm going to be competing. And I'm like, well, what would be a good magazine? Because the side shot mag, nice magazine, but there's been some issues and really i i there's a so yeah those that have the side shot magazines are there's there's been three renditions for the 25 and i think the 30 with the inner ring because it was spaced too far and slugs were tipping over ah so this is a this is a projectile specific issue that you're referencing because Correct. I, I have to say, uh, first of all, I have, um, I have stud loaders mm-hmm. for every one of my FX guns and I have three FX guns, an impact in 30. It's a, um, Mark two impact mm-hmm. without any of the power stuff on it. I, I missed that cutoff by three days to get the free upgrade. Okay. And they wanted me to spend $300. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. This thing does everything I need to do. So anyway, I have that uh, in 30 with the uh, with those mags that you're talking about, but I don't, I don't usually shoot slugs with it. And then my 22 Crown, which was the first FX gun I ever bought, um, I have... I have the stud loaders for that. And I have like, I have like five of the, I got their kit. It was like the speed loader, which you shake and the, and the pellets all fall. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And then five of the rings. I I got those kits when they came out and I thought, you know, well, I've got a YouTube channel. Maybe I could call this guy and get a, get a bro deal on those or, or whatever. And then I thought, you know what? He, he's a small He's a small provider, just like I am. Mm-hmm. And you get, when you first come on the scene, you get inundated with people who are, uh, yeah, I got a YouTube channel and I'm I'm growing and can I get some free stuff? And, you know, if you feed into all of those, you'll go broke. Um, so support this guy, support his stuff. Um these stud loaders are uh, are really good. I know initially he had some issues with uh, elephant's foot, which if you don't know what that is, it's a, it's a 3D printing artifact where the base of the 3D printing is a little bit wider than the top, mm-hmm. almost like it, it, it just kind of melted down a little bit. Um, I saw that on some of the parts that I got initially. The later stuff I got, he seemed to have that under control. And um, I think I think that product and the idea behind it are freaking amazing. And I, I hope he makes enough money to get injection molding going for those um, so that he can take that product to the next level. Because honestly... Without the the layer 
uh, striations in the 3D printing, I think those those items work even better because the I know on sometimes on mine the lighter 177 pellets mm -hmm. tend to hang up and not flow as well through those. But anyway, you were talking about an issue with um with side shot magazines and I interrupted you. So back to Patrick and the <laughs> and the side shot magazine issues. So so they had a problem with the pellets and primarily the slugs tipping over. Mm -hmm. So they fixed that. Okay. Side chat did a great job updating that along mm -hmm. with FX. Um, but I came across the video of I really I really wish I knew his name. I can't find it anywhere. Uh the inventor of these stud magazines. But there's a video of how they're made mm -hmm. and they actually have an automotive bearing in them. So regardless of how much you know the grain of the projectiles you're putting in it just flows there's like zero resistance almost and it rotates very quickly so if you're shooting fast or things like that i thought that was impressive to put that in there you know um and the fact that he broke it down to show you what the inside is and how he stands behind his product and how he this you know takes feedback from everyone and whatnot so definitely worth checking them out I'll make sure to put the website on here, but he has pretty much uh, all the FX stuff. He has these 40 round magazines for, for the impact and uh, for the wildcat. And it's a belt fed system. It looks a lot like the, uh, the super mags for the blitz nowadays. That's out. Um, you definitely don't want to be a lefty shooter because well, you ain't going to get your cheek on there. Not with that on there. Mm. So a little bit of that. Well, you know, lefty that. lefty shooters are technically broken anyway. So yeah. And as I like the fact as we're gonna prove, we're gonna get to that at the <laughs> end at the end of the podcast, but we're gonna we're gonna set oh, yeah. out to uh to challenge the lefty shooter with the righty shooter and, and see what happens. But I don't want to get into that yet. We're it's not time. Yeah. But so so you're you're talking about the magazines that um that stud loader has come up with. And I'm talking mm -hmm. about the, um, the, the speed loaders for. Yes. They, the, they go hand in hand the stock. Well, yeah. his, his speed loaders won't work on his magazines. As far as I know, uh, uh, they will. Oh will yeah. They? Oh yeah. He has complete kits. So I'll, I'll have to send you some pictures, but you can see it. Um, like, uh, the what is this 20 25 caliber i think is orange and it's a bundle pack you get one magazine one feeder and four loaders hmm. so the the feeder is you dump the pellets out of the tin into it you shake it around yeah, yeah. they all point down those. then you put the speed loader on there flip it over yeah and then you put the lid on and you put that yeah. single one in its little hole which is the keeper one and then when you get to go well, fill the mag, the the single one ends up in the hole, as correct. a function of transferring from the from the the shaky disc into the into the uh, speed loader. Correct, correct. And then the lid, which I'll get to in a second, which was fascinating. Uh, you pull the lid off his his magazine, and then you put it on top of the speed loader, flip it over like you would a side shot, shake it a little bit, and pull it off, and it's loaded. Hmm. Well, the lid has got some very strong magnets on it. So you just get it near it and it writes itself and locks it right there. Hmm. It ain't coming. You could shake it and he shakes it and not, nothing comes out. And cool. he, you know, he shows the little gap between where the pellet sits against the stop and coming all the way out and the small gap. So it doesn't crush it, doesn't deform it, especially like a JSB pellet. All the way out. No deformation of the pellet itself. So I thought that was fascinating. Um, you know, while, yeah. while you're on that topic, I, when I was looking for the perfect magazine for my impact, I, I saw the Eagle Vision made a magazine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And 
I'll tell you one thing that always impressed me about Eagle, Eagle Vision out of England was their machining quality and their finish quality. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there was some really, really nice metal work. And I got the magazine and I, I tried using it with my impact and it, I dubbed it the Mamer of pellets. And you know, I, I, I uh, maybe, yeah, maybe it's intended to be used with slugs or something, but none of the literature suggested that, but here's this beautifully made again, really, really strong magnets to hold that lid on the magazine once you're loaded. But, it would it would nip the skirts of my pellets mm. and and the magnets were so strong that it would deform the lead as you're trying to get this cover in place because you know you you you're lowering the two pieces together and those magnets engage and then it's like it's grabbing the skirts on the pellets that are tilted outward a little bit and i i wrote to him and i'm like am i Am I misunderstanding something? Am I am I using mm. this wrong? Um, I've got it in 30 cal and it is um horrible what it's doing to my pellets. And uh and he he told me to go back and read the directions, and I was like, Well, okay. I th I thought I read the directions pretty well, but uh it you know, I, I don't use it anymore. I it's in a drawer somewhere. Uh yeah. I'm sorry I spent the money because it was not inexpensive, especially to get it here from England. They're, they're pricey, uh, yeah. You, you, this guy sounds like he's got the magnet thing solved, where um, he's able to use powerful magnets and not not create the mamer of pellets. <laughs> Correct. Right. Cool. And That's there's, really cool. and since we're talking about magazines, there's a new magazine out. Uh oh, a new magazine. Yes. Yes. Do it's you not remember? Playboy, is it? No, 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 no. He was oh, gone. That's yeah, old. No, that's... Yeah, that's old. So do you remember the gentleman we met at RMAC last year, Chris Harris? Yeah, yeah. Okay, the owner of Bullet Central. Yes. So I saw a SHOT Show blip where he was coming out with a left-handed magazine for the impact. Well, that caught my eye. I and bet. then I saw it. I saw it on Airgun Nation. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. Well, then I was perusing YouTube like I do. And I came across Ernest Roche channel. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about the Bullet Central Precision Magazine. Mm. Talk about CNC work. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I just thought of this one. You, you, I'll, I'll send you the link to it. And I'll attach it to the podcast here. But Ernest goes over the whole thing. You want to talk about perfection and the gap where the pellet stop is and how it goes all the way to the very end and how it's, he even shows you how to set up your impact so mm -hmm. that the barrel is right. And then there's a little plate on the back that some people put in backwards, which then makes it very difficult to get the magazine in. I learned that one. That was new. Um, but there's literally no gap. It's, it's minute from when it leaves the magazine till it gets into the breech and then oh, wow. pushed into the barrel. And it's called the precision and it's got magnets and you flip it over and it holds the lid underneath you spin it around. It's, it's got a bearing in it also. Hmm. Um, it seems to be serviceable uh, and you can set it up to be left-handed. You buy left-handed ones. I'm like, can you still buy, if you, if you use the correct hand to shoot, can you, is it, does he still have ones for right-handed shooters? Yeah, he has, of course he has righties. He, he just remembered uh, us lefties. Uh, so yeah, he was in his right mind when he created the left-handed magazine. Uh, I, yeah. see. I see what <laughs> you did there. Nice, I see it. Nice good, work. good. So nice. I thought that was cool. Um, definitely. I think we're going to see them in our Mac when we're there. Mm. Um, I'm contemplating because another guy that you and I both talk about every now and then speaking of magazines, because this has come up recently, all these magazine manufacturers. And then you have Orion. Mm -hmm. The Iguana, the, what is it? Orion, the Iguana Man or something like Iguana that. Iguana Hunter. Iguana Hunter. And he makes his own magazine. Mm -hmm. And he makes inserts, the in, the inner part for the um, side shot mag. Now, 
I like how he color codes them. So yeah. if it's a specific caliber, you can look at it and go, bam, it's it's that's my 22s or that's my well, and you and you're I love the the um speed loader product too. Um that is all color coded, so yes, there's no mistake. Yes. You grab yellow for 30, uh, I think it's blue for 177, yep, and red for 22. Correct. And you suggested orange for orange, uh, I think it's 25. 25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that that to me was brilliant because you know there's no there's no mistaking that. Yeah. And I honestly well, I I keep I I cut the foam in my uh in my FX cases to fit those so that they're they're right there with the gun when I need yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah, they're great when you're out in the field and then just bam. But there's so many choices and there's so much innovation that's going on just with magazines. You know, you invent stuff, I I know that and you bring it to market. Um, you got Orion and then you got the big guys, you got side shot, you got bullet central coming out with stuff constantly. Now you got stud, you know, it's like, what, what else is out there? How could you make a magazine better? And it just keeps getting better and better and better. And then what fits your budget? You know, um, I know Orion stuff out of everything is the cheapest option as far as cost, but I think he should charge more personally. But that's up to him because the quality mm-hmm. is there. You know, I've seen the iguana people down shooting, shooting down in Florida. They're not just shooting a little bit. They're shooting a lot and they work. Mm-hmm. So they work in a hundred and hundred, hundred thousand degree temperatures down there in Florida in the summer, down to the really cold in the, in the winter. So up here in the Northern States. So, but, uh, but I thought it was fascinating about the, all, all these magazines that are coming out now. So, or updates, upgrades, evolution, however you want to look at that. I thought it was cool. Yeah, it seems to be um, an awful lot of focus on the um, on the Impact magazine and not as much on the on the Crown and Dreamline mags. I mean, there's there is some there. There certainly is, mm-hmm. but it seems like the the big preoccupation is with the with the Impact. And I think that's a lot because it's competitions. Yeah. More people are getting involved. And well, I mean, as far as business, you got to make what people want. Oh, yeah. And there's a large demand. Oh, you know, I'm not saying that there's not a demand for the other stuff, but impacts are, you go to competitions, they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. And they got, they hold so many, so many pellets. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. You know, so. And, uh, you know, honestly, I know, um, I know Tyler Patner has been critical of the crown and how that size of that magazine kind of limits your scope mounting yeah. options. Cause you, you really have to jack it up there pretty high to clear the magazine. I believe that's been his biggest criticism of the crown overall. And I get it. I mean, I get it, but honestly um, for field target use, which is what I use my 177 um, crown for almost exclusively. I've got a really nice custom designed uh, CARM single loader in that gun. And that's what I use for field target. So I'm not even running a mag on that gun. So I could actually go back and drop that scope down on some lower rings if, if I wanted to. Um, but it it just works it does what it's meant to do and it, it does it really well but i love that um i was able to reach out to carm um where is he czechoslovakia or somewhere something like that yeah i forgot about Carm. somewhere over yeah, there i have, a, I have um, a bunch of Carm magazines up there yeah see, let's see here no nope. i have a i have a sticker on my on my gun safe here in the bunker from him but uh <laughs> he he you know i i told him i said hey um just a Fun fact, if you're using a crown in a GRS stock, the single shot loader, the lever is in the wrong place. It interferes with the stock. And I had taken a Dremel and kind of cut mine out to to get it to be able to open up all the way. And he's like, oh, okay, I, I know how to fix that. Let me uh let me redo the CAD for that and uh and I'll send you a custom one for uh 
for GRS. I'm pretty sure he went ahead and made a product out of it and listened mm-hmm. to the site. Um, but that was that was me. That was me struggling with the uh, with his original single shot loader uh, on a GRS stock that kind of led to that. But I love the fact that you can reach out right to the guy. You know, not you're not going through layers of corporate bureaucracy. Um, to talk to somebody, you're you're actually talking to the guy that makes the stuff. And um, yep. I know a, a lot of my innovations on product have come from customers that said, "Hey, um, why don't you come out with a with a set of silhouettes that are all scaled to be in the same plane?" I'm like, well, "That's freaking brilliant! Why? <laughs> yeah, why didn't I do that? Let me go do that." <laughs> yeah. I wish I could read the language. But uh, yeah, I'd probably go with Czechoslovakia. That's what it looks like. His name's Darko. Yes, Darko. I can't even say his last name. I want, I'm not even going to butcher it. But yeah, you can you can contact him directly. Yeah, yeah, fascinating. His, his English is is really good. So probably better than ours. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, he already has one more language than I do. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, but yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll make sure to get all those on, on the podcast, uh, notes. And I think you'll what, get them on the, on the YouTube so you can follow them down in the. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, all right. So let's talk about our little challenge. Ooh, this is yes. going to be interesting. Now I, I, I would like to point out that this, this is just a fun competition between two guys who have exactly the same rifle outfitted. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is the Notos from Umarex topped with a bug buster uh, from UTG. So this is low cost hardware. This is um, really inexpensive. Um, they're, they're great. It's a great truck gun to me. It's a great knock around the farm gun. Um, you know, chuck it on the trunk seat and and drive down to the barn and chase some rats around. It's that kind of gun. It does that exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. But Patrick and I are going to try and take this to a new level uh, and and come up with a a fun game of horse, Um, except instead of horse, we're going to use the word geeks uh, to try and eliminate each other um, by calling in each episode of the podcast for the next several episodes um we're gonna one of us is gonna throw out a challenge to the other Mm -hmm. and if you if you call the challenge and you miss it then you get a letter um if you answer the challenge and you hit it then you don't get a letter and the first one to spell geeks is out does that sound pretty pretty reasonable to you, Patrick? Sounds good. And I'll put these rules on the Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And now, of course, you got to video it. Yes. And which which will not be a problem. How many attempts do you get it? Is it a one one and go? One and done. You get okay. you get you get one shot unless unless the person who's calling the shot says the least number of shots wins because you can you can you can make the shot i mean it's just like it's just like the game course you can you can throw some nuances in there on the shot you can say well okay we're going to hang a string at 30 yards and and the one with the least number of of shots wins uh to break the string or anything like that i mean I'm, i'm just throwing stuff out there but let's let's not hem ourselves in too hard with the rules and also let's invite our our listeners and viewers to jump in on this too you know throw your throw your video up on the uh on the facebook group or um send us a comment either through through youtube or through uh through patrick's email address airgungeeks at gmail.com and uh and share these with us because we'd love to see them. We're gonna we're gonna have fun with this, and we'd love to bring everybody along with us. Yeah, definitely. I'll I'll get it set up on the Facebook page, mm-hmm. to where we can keep track of that. I'll have to 
I think there's a way to do that. And then uh, we'll have some funds and we can uh, we can see how good you can shoot with an apple in your head. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something like that. So it yep. sounds pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, I was out. Um, I was out warming up my no toast today because I haven't shot it in at least a month and um, just trying some new pellets. So that, that'd be another good part. What pellet did you use or you mm -hmm. can leave that open or whatever, you know, that, I think this would be fun. This would be fun. Definitely. I, I, uh, I think I mentioned this before, but I got my notos uh, the day before I went in the hospital and uh, I have still have yet to put a pellet through that bore and I need to, I need to do that. I need to get it sighted in because uh, we're going to be, we're going to be going live here uh, with this episode. And um, uh, Patrick, I think it's only appropriate that we, um, we flip a coin, which I don't have a coin. Do you have a coin? Patrick? I, I have a coin. Yes. Okay. Yes. I have American currency change in the pocket. <laughs> That's odd that I have that. Oh, look, I have a quarter. Perfect. All right. And it's the so, uh, it's the astronaut one. Really good. Really yeah. good. So we're going to flip a coin to determine who calls the first shot. All right. You you can you can choose. What do you okay. want? Heads or I'm going to go with heads. I'm going to go with heads. And it's heads. All right. Now you can't Very see good. it, but it's heads. Excellent. So, Patrick, my shot is 40 yards okay. off, offhand with your notos at a pop can, a full pop can, because we want it. We want to see the uh, we want to see the rupture and you Shaking can that shake stir, it up. Right? So there's all <laughs> kinds of pressure in there, too. That would be good. Shaking that stir. You can <laughs> substitute a beer can because for me, that's really the only appropriate use I have left for beer cans <laughs> is to is to shoot at them. Um, so it can be pop, it can be uh, it can be sparkle water, it can be any carbonated beverage that comes in a twelve ounce can at forty yards offhand with your nodos. Okay, is there an ammo requirement? Uh, whatever you have determined works best okay. for your gun. You, uh, you should have, you should be able to use the optimal projectile with your, uh, with your nodos. And I don't, I don't yet know what that is. I know in mine right now in my magazines, I've got, um, these JSB exact jumbo Diablos in there, uh, the 15.88. Um, they fit great in the mags and, um, Here's my mags in my my notos doodad. <laughs> I love that thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this will be up on my website here shortly. You can order them from me, and uh, and the magnetic retention on the uh, on these guys and the shingle shot tray is contained as well, and a really nice sliding fit for the uh, fill probe because God, I hate fill probes and and to not you. have it with the gun. I will always forget it. Um, so, yeah. Fun stuff. Uh, Patrick and I both have identical, identically outfitted Nodos rifles. Yep. He's got he's got a note a Nodos do that as well, and um, and we're gonna we're gonna get this party started, and um, and see what happens. You get you get one shot at the can. You can sight in, um, and you can shoot a sighter at 40 yards if you okay. if you want to but you can't shoot at the can you only get one try at shooting the can very good very good and to, and to be exact so everyone knows it's the no toast carbine mm -hmm. with high rings uh they're leaper rings and it's the three to 12 by 32 bug buster yeah the three to nine yep so so if you want to play along Bust that wallet out, and uh, well, actually, right now they're kind of hard to get again. Hopefully, yeah. uh, hopefully, Umarex uh, gets their elves in motion and uh, and cranks out a bunch more of these things. Yeah. They seem to be 
really, really popular. Yeah. Make sure you get your doodad though. Oh yeah. Yeah. So when definitely. you get it. Yeah. Definitely. And, if you're gonna if you're gonna shoot in style, you need correct. something called a doodad on your rifle. I mean, that's yeah. that goes without saying. And 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 I and I verified today. I put my doodad on and I did not see it in mm -hmm. the scope. Yep. I was like, hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I, I like it because I keep the probe in the gun. Yes. And while I was on the range messing around, I got caught, it came out. I'm like, put it in my doodad and closed it up. And nice. we were all good. So nice. um and, and also these are factory guns. Uh we know there's a video out there where you can go in, change the rag, you can adjust the hammer spring on these, all that. We didn't do any of that. Nope. So we're literally just learning our gun because my gun shoots a little different than Bill because Bill's in California and I'm in Ohio. So we have that variance. So he might shoot well, better than me. He might not. Wait a minute. What's your elevation? 1200. I'm six, level. I'm 600. So I'm, I'm about half of that. Half of that. Yeah. But I don't think might, 600 feet is, is going to amount to a hill of beans in in pneumatics performance i, I mean well, i'll have to yeah. channel my inner bernoulli to see if that's well, if that's true but uh, i i don't know you you might be cheating a little bit just a why? little it's being lower a little faster than mine it got there yeah but i've got i've got much. higher air density so there's more resistance uh, on my pellets when they leave the barrel i mean uh, honestly, I, I don't. I don't think these guns are accurate enough to. I mean, they're they're plenty accurate for their price point. I, I give them that, um, but I don't. I don't know that you're going to get a single ragged group at at thirty forty yards. Um, and I promise I didn't do anything to your gun before I shipped it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that, but uh, you know. Well, I know I'm, that because I think mine shipped from Utah. It might have. Yeah. It might have. Yeah. I think it did. So, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. So we'll have that done by the next, let's see, we're recording. This will come out, let's see, today is the 22nd we're recording. So that's Wednesday. So like the 27th should be Monday. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm rushing to... Uh to check the weather because Jesus, I have been, uh, I've been just getting lambasted out here with rain um, and finding any, any time to go out and even set up my range. I mean, I pulled my whole range in um, when I got the initial weather reports on uh, what it was going to be like this winter. And I said, I don't want all my stuff out there in all <laughs> the rain, but uh, it looks like after today I've got, um, I've got a couple of days of sunshine and then back to the rain again. So, uh, oh my gosh, a lot, a lot of rain out of the next 10 days, five of them are sunny and five of them are rainy. And that's just not, not typical California <laughs> this late in the winter, but, um, or yeah. spring for that matter. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get this done. Um, directly. Sounds good. And we'll yeah, see who earns their first letter. I'll I'll, I'll put it down for you already. So oh, wait a um, <laughs> Oh, I'm highly competitive. You're going to learn that. Oh, yeah. We'll see. You're going to better need shot. To be. You're, you're going to need to be. <laughs> this is going to this is going to get interesting on 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 the Facebook page. But yeah, this officially <laughs> starts the 27th, and we're still recording every other week. So it's going to go for eight weeks, technically. Mm -hmm. So four episodes. And uh, if someone wants to throw a challenge in for us to do. There's five, you know, letters. five letters. Five right. letters. So five weeks of time. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I have Bonnie. Double check your math. Yeah. It's that common core. I just round it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so if someone's got ideas. Be more. Feel, oh heck yeah! Please email, email yeah. or, you know what? I'm gonna say that email at airgungeeks at gmail dot com. Because trying to find stuff on the Facebook page, yeah. Ooh, unless you want to direct message me, 
yeah the That's magic the magic of uh of zuckerberg is lost on me these days yeah 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 someone someone wanted me to to ask you bill are we going to start doing tiktoks no i'm like mm. no i i for the same reason i won't do um i won't do short form videos on youtube um I, I've done a few because it was all the rage and everybody was jumping on that bandwagon. But honestly, it's like a dopamine pump. You know, you just you just sitting there mesmerized by one video after another, and you're just thumbing through these things. And what are you what are you learning? Um, you know, honestly, some dance moves that none of us are ever going to use, or <laughs> or or something really silly. It, it just to me. I like I like long form videos because I want to show people stuff. I want to I want to teach. I want to I want people to have a chance to learn something, not not just get entertained for thirty seconds and then move on to the next new shiny thing. Um, yeah, I call it the dopamine pump. Both TikTok and uh, short form uh, YouTube videos. Not a fan, but yeah. I'm old and I'm dated and you know, difficult to change. Ask my wife, she'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of dopamine and exciting things, whoa! Uh, I started. Uh, I reached out to some people. Very nice. And, um, hopefully they didn't slap you. No, they they didn't laugh either. That's good. Uh, so I ended up talking to Thane Simmons from Saber Tactical, mm -hmm. um, and said, "Hey, there's the I I saw this new fishing thing." fishing barrel system for the impact. And we started talking and whatnot. And I said, you know what? You haven't been on the podcast in a while. So in the future, make sure you pay attention. We're going to get Thane Simmons nice. back, back from Saber Tactical. Always a fun guest. Always fun. And we're going to talk about all the new and exciting things. Uh, maybe get some secrets out of them for mm -hmm. RMAC. Don't know. So with that being said, if you have any questions that you would like us to ask Thane from uh, Saber Tactical, send them to the to the uh, email, airgungeeks at gmail.com, and we'll make a list, Bill and I, and we'll have a Q&A with him and see if Excellent. we can get those answered for you. Love it. Um, and on that note, don't forget, you still have Super Geeks 10. Correct. The code on the Target Forge website, and that is applicable for uh gx cs2 cs3 compressor parts it's good for any of the target stuff that's up there right now there is more coming um but we're changing the way we're doing the manufacturing so there there's some stuff that's just not available right now but will be in the future but there's plenty of stuff up there that you can still get uh get your home range set up this spring so remember that's super geeks 10 all one word super geeks and the number 10 so does that save you 10 percent? yes it does matter of fact it, i really you figured that out all by yourself patrick all by myself you didn't need bonnie <laughs> or your fingers <laughs> no i was doing it down here like, mm, that sounds like 10 percent. <laughs> no, i appreciate yeah i appreciate that you know that helps bill out that helps the podcast out and that yep. mostly helps you out so make sure you know especially nowadays with trying to save a a buck here or there is 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 very helpful. So yep. um yeah, remember that Super Geek 10. Um I also had another conversation that I had with uh Felipe. Hmm. From Where's Felipe Accutech. from? He is in California himself. Okay. So he's Accutech, what I can remember. Accutech yeah. bipods, right? Accutech, yep, correct. Top of the line bipods. And we had a nice conversation and wow you guys need to tune in for that because he he's a family guy mm -hmm. i want to just say that and the way his brain works bill you and him are going to have a lovely conversation because he's he's the brain he's part of the big brains and all of that so um he's going to be in an upcoming episode um and we're going to try and get some secrets from him on how to maybe squeeze a little more accuracy out of a bipod if that's possible i don't know or what's the right bipod for speed shooting versus bench? Hmm. And what type of bipod should you use on a big bore gun versus a smaller caliber? 
uh, and all of that. And then some that his uh, new design, the hydraulic one that came out at Shot Show, which <laughs> that was interesting. That was very interesting. Absolutely super cool in the way that that unit you can literally micro step it up and down for really precise touch free aiming. But I got to believe, you know, but by the time you get your hot rod FX air gun or um, uh, your your crazy electronic British gun day state, by the time you spend the money for that and then you go get an element um, – Thanos, or what was it? Uh, oh, the the Nexus, the top of the line, Theos, or the, the Theos, or the, yeah, or the, or the Titan. Oh, the Theos. I yeah. keep forgetting about the time that you one. get your your Theos yeah, yeah. optic on there, <laughs> and uh, and then this hydraulically actuated bipod. I mean, you're you're almost at ten thousand uh, dollars of coin in a in a shooting system, um, and you know, I. I did a little experiment this week, Patrick. I um I've been playing around with uh with Chat GPT mm-hmm. and and I recently got an invitation from Google to be a user on their Bard system. So Bard is a is a writing tool. It's an AI writing tool where you know you can ask it a question and it it spits back what it thinks a valid answer is. And honestly, uh, chat GPT has been out for a while. And mm-hmm. I, whenever I've tried to use it for air gun specific content, the wheels fall off that train really fast. It doesn't have much knowledge um, about air gunning at all. Honestly, it, it just, it's not very good, but when I played with the Bard from Google, I was astonished at how good it was at answering the question. And the question I posed to both systems was, um, what benefit does air guns, what, what benefit do air guns have to the firearm world? And this thing stacked up like a bunch of responses that were all right on. Not one of them I could have <laughs> argumented against and said, no, you're you're full of crap. That's not true. It 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 nailed it. It's like ammo availability is better. Um, it's quiet. You can practice at home in your backyard. Um, you get the same skills that you that you gain with a firearm, and you can practice at home. So you're gonna practice more, you're gonna use it more, and it's less expensive to use. So mm-hmm. Uh, that that was just uh, eye opening to me to see that um, some of these tools are really coming along. And I, although I, you know, when I write, I, I love to write myself. I don't I don't rely on these tools to do that. But I was quite impressed that um, a tool from Google could have that kind of clarity uh, and accuracy. But that was fun. That's crazy. Yeah, AI is very interesting. Mm-hmm. Maybe AI will go in that gun you just said you built for ten thousand dollars. <laughs> uh, well, um, you it's know, fire. <laughs> you look at the at the epic. Um, you know, I know, right? <laughs> um, it, it's talking to you for crying out loud. Uh, I know. What is next? I mean, if you look at that that um, the new electronic optic from Element. Uh, oh, the, it, the Hyper it, Seven its ability to actually feed in environmental data and adjust the point of aim for you. I mean, that's that stuff that was military technology, you know, years ago, well, a couple Mm -hmm. of years ago. And now it's, now it's in the, it can be, well, soon will be in the hands of, of, you know, the John Q public, you and I, we can go buy that unit. I mean, it'll be a while before I can afford one, but um, they they are pretty nice. Um, but, you know, what does it really take for a computer to calculate a trajectory 
I mean, mm-hmm. we've been doing that since we had mechanical systems doing it in World War II in the old bomb sites. They were mm-hmm. they were very good at, at doing that. And to take a you know processor from a smartphone and put that in your gun and and have it adjust that range and weather data and all of that stuff and have it adjust the crosshair um you know that 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 takes a lot of the sport out of the out of the game in my Correct. opinion but yeah if you're pesting like you are um and you know getting that job done with as few shots as possible that matters that matters to you as the guy who's got to um go around and fix holes and barns and stuff like that if you miss but it also matters to the to the farmer or the homeowner or the community that you're pesting for that you're mm-hmm. you're able to deliver computerized accuracy on the target that you want to take out and and unless an unknown variable comes in and changes stuff on you like I walk up behind you and say, Hey Patrick, what are you doing? <laughs> Scare yeah. the crap out of you. Um, you're not gonna miss in that in that environment. So is that the future? I don't know. Um mm. it certainly it certainly seems like we're a big step closer with that announcement at Shot Show this year from Element. So I know, right? Yeah. 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 All right. Interesting times. Well, any any final words for this episode for the listeners, Bill? Uh, mind your health, boys. Uh, life is trying to kill us and, uh, (laughs) whatever you can do to, to get the weight off. I know I had some, uh, some viewers on my YouTube channel that were like, Hey, uh, looks like he's putting on some weight. Um, he needs to, he needs to take that off before he's not with us anymore. And initially I, I kind of took offense to that, but they were right. Um, it, it almost did take me out recently and, Mm -hmm. uh, we're back in the fight again. And officially since February 3rd, we are down 24 pounds. So we're going to keep, we're going to keep hammering that, uh, that anvil and, uh, and get this weight off and get back to the health that I had before and uh, hopefully be part of the air gun geeks even longer. So that's all I've got, Patrick. Yeah. And I'll definitely second that. Um, and with all the things going on in the world, concentrate on making memories. Make sure it's of peace, love, and joy. Enjoy your life because, as we all know, it could end tomorrow. Today yep. is a present. Live in it. And like always, stay geeky. <laughs> <laughs>